let's take a look at stationary points today. So, you have a curve like this, we've got to think about what's happening on each section of the curve. So, this portion here, let me just take that back a little, you've got um, this section of the graph is called decreasing because it's going down, the gradient is negative. Um, after that you would get an increasing portion here, so you have everything is going up at that point, and then this other part here you can see it goes back to decreasing again. So in the increasing parts the gradient is positive, in the decreasing parts it's negative to tell you whether the graph is going up or down. So when we talk about increasing and decreasing functions we're talking about when they're going up or when they're going down. So now let's look at that, um, those points there where it changes between being increasing or decreasing um, and what's happening at those points. Now these points here actually have a gradient of zero. If we drew the tangent there and took the gradient of it, it would be zero, it would be a horizontal line. So to, to the left of that first one you've got a negative gradient and to the right you've got a positive gradient. So in between there you have a gradient equal to zero. So stationary points have that property where they're neither increasing nor decreasing and to find them we know that the gradient is zero. So we can work out dy by dx equals zero to find where those stationary points are. So we're going to find the stationary points on this curve. So first of all we need to do dy by dx. So differentiate that um, expression there and we get 2x minus 5. Now we need to know when that's equal to 0, that will tell us where the stationary points are. So we solve that equation and we get x equals 2.5. So the stationary point is at 2.5 and then we substitute it back into the equation for y to work out the y coordinate. Okay, second example, find the turning points on the curve. Sometimes they're called turning points instead of stationary points, so you just need to know both of those terms. And we're going to differentiate and set it equal to zero and solve that equation. Now here we have a quadratic that can be factorised. So we have two turning points on this curve, which you would expect because it was a cubic curve, so you know it's going to turn twice and we can work out the y-coordinates for each of those. So we have the turning points at these coordinates. 